feel the same way uh, this morning. And I'm glad and I'm thankful that God has blessed us to be able to come out. And um, we, we certainly want to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no greater name that I've ever found to welcome people in. And um, what a great honor and, and, and to be able to meet like this for this reason. And uh, we may do things just a little bit different than than you do. Maybe if you're here today from another church. And, but we're all working towards the same goal. And, and that's for the upbuild of His kingdom. And that's what matters the most. I've often said like this, that if you do things from your heart, and you do it with the full intent to please the Lord, you'll be blessed for it, Brother Randy. Yeah. Um, but if you seek to please man, there's no blessing in that. That's, that's all you'll get, Brother Jonah. And, um, but we're here today about um, um, to do something that I've always found that um, means uh, is one of the most important things to a church. And that is, Brother Paul, when you look out and, and you begin to look for beacons, um, it's not everyone can qualify that position. Okay. It's not everyone that can meet the standards that we feel like that a brother or sister um, when it comes to setting them aside. And you know, I wanted to say like this, there's um, some that when they set aside a brethren for deacons, they also will inquire for their wives to uh, be with them and things. We don't, we've never practiced and ordained uh, women as deacons, but it was always used to for them to have understanding of their husband's duty and things of that nature. I've often said, I've often said like this, amongst old Baptist people, a lot of times the women was focused on for that because pretty much of one thing, and that was to make bread for community. And, uh, um, and that's important, don't get me wrong. But the true criteria of a deacon, uh, Paul holds so much higher um, ground than just that. Um, there's, there's so much that we overlook, for Paul, that uh, um, needs to be explained about uh, a deacon position and how much there are. I'd like to ask if Brother Keith would, if him and um, Brother Robin, if they come down. And um, if you want to, Brother, you can, you can face these seats towards, towards the stand here. I'd like for, to ask Brother um, Josh and Brother Paul, if you, Brother, would come up and take place on the stand. And Brother Darren, I'll keep more switch seats with Brother Paul. And then you rather gather around if you want to ordain the Lord and gather around. Okay, you can see it. <clears throat> November the 10th in 2013, the Latin Church of Jesus Christ of United Bandits, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, um, voted by as far as the board of the directors of the church body that this day the ordination ceremony be conducted for Brother Robin Maddox and Brother Keith Vance. The uh, church uh, brethren we discussed the moderator of the presbytery would uh, be myself and the Paul Klein the clerk and the examining elders and deacons that are present. And um, at this time, um, the Lexington Church has already found these brethren to be uh, certainly worthy and, uh, um, and, and found to uh, meet the criteria of what they feel like that they would uh, want in deacons. And um, like to say like this that we we set these brethren the Lexington Church has um, forward to these brethren and, and us to come in and to form a presbytery and to um, um, give them qualifications and, and explain to them their office and um, then and finality to proceed on with laying on of hands and at this time I would like to ask the presbytery those that are here the brethren that were ordained I'd like to have a move that uh, we receive these two brethren into this presbytery. Uh, I'd like to move that we receive this two breath to the president. President Mother, I've said that. We have met here today to perform a sacred and holy act. Many months ago, the church began praying over a matter of needing deacons to fulfill needs carried out by the title of deacon. Minds of the leadership and others were of one accord that we would discuss with Brother Robin Maddox and Brother Keith Banks their feelings of this office. 
our pastor, Elder Fred Neal, in person contacted and in person discussed with them the seriousness and the fact that the church felt led from these two brothers to represent them as deacons. Both after prayer and much thought accepted to serve the church as deacons and has caused this day to occur for the service of laying on of hands and for one of the most sacred and honorable positions in the household of faith. And jealous eyes from the Greek word, diakonos, meaning a runner, a messenger, a servant, for a long period, a feeling of mutual jealousy had existed between the Hebrews or Jews proper. The sacred language of the Palestine and the Hellstines or Jewish of the Grecian speech who had adopted the Grecian language and read in Septuagint version of the Bible instead of Hebrew. The jealousy early appeared in the Christian community. It was alleged that by the Hellstines that their widows were overlooked in daily distribution of the alms. And the spirit it had to be checked. The apostles, according to the advice of the disciples, was to look out for seven men of good report, full of the Holy Ghost, and men of practical wisdom, who should take entire charge of distribution, leaving them free to devote themselves entirely to the spiritual functions of their office. Acts 6, 1-6. This was accordingly done. Seven men who were chosen, who appeared from their names, to have the Hellstines the name deacon, is now here applied in the New Testament. They are simply called the seven. Their office was first secular, but it afterwards became also spiritual. For among other qualifications, they must be apt to teach. And I have learned from both of you, brother. Um, sometimes you don't, you're not looked at probably by the and say, you taught me something. But one of the greatest things is for someone to learn something from someone Amen. is to realize it later. Amen. That's right, brother. Any person ordained in any position of the church needs wisdom, not to abuse your power, but rather to use it as a means of serving God and serving His people. As deacon, has a responsibility to the church. The church also has a responsibility to you. We are still strong in our faith and practice of communion and washing the feet. Both of these brothers just took part. And we've had some good ones. Both of these brethren has took part in this service of communion and washing the feet and understand the importance of it and promise to support and make ready for the service whenever held a blessing in church or any of our own and the, and the same faith and order or whenever called upon that you feel led by the Spirit. For the sake of this ceremony and witnesses here today, Brother Robin, do you agree with our current practice of communion and will continue to uphold as long as as you serve the Lexington Church as a deacon. Yes, I do. Brother Keith, do you agree with our community in practice? And will you continue to uphold as long as you serve the Lexington Church as a deacon? Yes, sir. The clerk will note that the brethren both answered yes to that question. Oh, to the Lexington Church, our obligation to these brethren is, is somewhat, and I, I thought to myself the best way to put it in three folds, is to pray for them, to encourage them, and to follow them. If we don't have that faith in them, we shouldn't have done this today. First, the church should pray for its deacons as we, the Lexington Church, has. And the Lord has sent us two, and I believe two good ones. And the New Testament church was born, and it was born out of prayer. Following the ascension of our Lord, the disciples, 120 in number, gathered in an upper room and began to pray, Brother Paul. They prayed until the Holy Spirit came 
on the day of Pentecost. As a result of the moving of the Spirit of God, Peter preached and 3,000 souls were added to the church that day. What a great day that must have been. I've never even been in a church gathering with 3,000 people. But to see 3,000 people that came to a meeting lost, came to a meeting, didn't know if they would leave and have any more hope. And when they left, they left with the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost is that feeling that we felt when Brother Colin was up. And that day that he touched us. You know, I missed the day that he touched me when he was singing. I was getting ready to sit down. That's why I stood on Sunday, Brother Randy. Because the second best time that he touched me was when he told me, go home. Go home. Go home. And, and, and it's moving. And I'm glad to see those rise. As the church was born out of prayer, so it goes forward on the wings of prayer. There is nothing more important you can do for a person, especially these brethren, these deacons, than to pray for them. Someone has said, if you depend on organization, you get organization. If you depend on money, you get what money can do. If you depend on education, you get what education can do. If you depend on promotion, you, do, you get what promotion will do. But if you depend on prayer, you get what God can do. Amen. Mm -hmm. We desperately want what God can do. Uh -huh. One of Satan's primary tools in the ministry is, to, is discouragement. If he can drive a wedge of discouragement into the Christian commitment and service, he has won the major victory. I've never forgot this saying. I learned it as a young boy in school. But what Mark Twain said once, he said, I can live three months on one good compliment. There is enough discouragement in the world without our adding to it. May God bless us to be encouragers to one another. Amen. And to encourage these brothers. Amen. Lord. This time, I'd like to ask our assistant moderator of our association, Elder Colin Cotton, to come and to give a charge to these brethren. He's been moderating churches for years, and he's had deacons, and he said, and I'm sure that he can say something to them. They don't have to be, they don't have to be a, a long, long, drawn-out sermon that you can say things. And if God blesses you, too, you feel however you feel, and you go right on. And um, you go ahead. Go ahead. However you want. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to say I come in an honor to be here this morning to be a part of a holy event. Sacred event. I'd like to say to these two brothers, and I've walked with watched them as they say Mark Clyde from Brother Robert Brother Keith <coughs> and when they informed me that I would want to set them in this church as deacons I thought what a great day yeah, well, yeah. Amen Brother I know Because in watching these brothers, I'm watching. I've seen the qualifications in both of you brothers. Change nothing in what you've already done. Continue to go forward. Press on. Because you've been pressing. Continue to show the same hospitality <laughs> and the kindness that you've already shown. Help and help is needed. <coughs> when it's called for and you feel in your heart and know that it's of God and it's of need, reach out with the same loving hands and 
compassion that you have so far. Feel in all my heart, brother, that you both can be, as you have been, a great inspiration to the rest of the United Baptist Church. Personally, can speak for myself each time that I've been here. Both of these men have welcomed me with arms of love. And I've seen them do others. That's what, that's what we'll build your church. Just continue to reach out to arms of love. And compassion. For God is love. As I said, I don't really have a whole lot to say to you, brothers. Just continue to do as you're doing. I believe with all my heart that you've been chosen for a good work. A very important work. A great part of this church. And I feel that you both will do your very best. Fulfill that. Not only for the love of this church, but for the love of your God that you're trying to please. Above all things, stand firm. Stand firm on what does say uh -huh. God's word. No matter who may be offended. For I had rather all men be offended at me as to have my God offended at me one time. Look to him for wisdom. Look for him, to him for guidance in all your direction. Seek him in all things. You'll do with him. You'll do very well. This church will do with him. I believe with all my heart that you got people here in this little church that'll work with you. They'll pray for you. They'll live. You'll do your very best. And I believe you will. And may the grace of God, the love of God, and His protecting power go with you wherever you have to go. Because sometimes we have to get sheep go out among wolves. We need to be strong. But still, yet we must reach out. Hands of compassion, hands of love. Yes, sir. In all things that you do, let it be done in love, and things will be well with you. As we get here this morning, shortly to lay hands upon you, begin to pray. My prayer is, my God, go with you. Wherever you go, you will always. For the day that's really all I have to say this morning. Yeah. I feel like Brother Collins giving his brother good instruction and witness what that he said. I'd like to say say this to um, these brothers. Going back to the support and to encourage these brothers. We, we realize, and you realize, that it's your duty to, um, the, the Bible says, to uh, visit the sick and the orphans and the widows and need, and, um, and to care for them and to be there for them if need be. And um, we've often, I've often heard that, that it's all down through time, and you know, the Baptist churches quoted to the deacons and, and, and put to them sermon. But uh, we want you to realize that if you're in a situation that you hear, of someone sick or in a distressed situation and you can't get to them, then you by all means have every right to call upon another brother or sister to go to their aid and to be their family. That's that's good direction of the deacons to be able to do. You may not be able to make it, but someone else maybe can. The, uh, there's been many a time that Jason couldn't make it, but somebody else did. There's been many times that I could, but God always had. And, and, and that's what to trust on. We want to support. We want to support you in that. When brethren come that is uh, um, um, traveled and, and, and come in with us, and, and, and we don't, uh, we never believed in, in pain as far as um, ministers um, for for preaching. But you can't pay ministers for preaching as far as somebody said. What do you mean you can't? And um, there's no price I've ever found for counting on the gospel. There's, there's just no amount of money that could actually purchase it when it's blessed to be preached. It's the best feeling I've ever felt. But I've seen, I've seen both of these brethren before um, uh, help brethren in the travels and, and things, and, and that means a lot. You continue to do that. God bids you to do that. 
and, and you have the authority that if you feel like that someone needs help and assistance, you know the treasure here at this church. You don't feel don't feel a bit harder. If you have to take it out of your pocket, the church will reimburse you for that and, and, and to help someone. God will always make a way. God will always make a way. And and I've heard them say that before about people. They'd say, Well, I, I'm not going to do that, Brother Paul, because the Lord will make the way. But sometimes the Lord's way may be that we reach in the back of our pocket we can help people out and, and things. You know, God will make a way, but sometimes it's through us to help. I know sometimes people take advantage of things sometimes, and you know that after a while. But there's one thing I'd rather err on being and, being, and showing love and give and, and, and then to and feel like that I was a little well. I mean, both you brothers have given in, in work um, no. financially and, and um, supported this church and, and, and we appreciate that and we love you for that. I'd like to say, is there anybody that has any remarks? <coughs> Brother Robin's wife has been real ill. In fact, when we was down in Florida, she was no. even at the point that she was in no. the ICU in the intensive care. And uh, um, she's been very ill, and um, but I, I know that she was able, no doubt, she would have been here today. Um, Sister Leah is here. Sister Leah, are, are you willing to help and support those people as much as you can in this office? I will. We're glad of that. And um, I'd like to say, Brother Fred, you brought them in. Does the church have anything they'd like to say? Brother Jason, I, I want to say I thank the Lord that He is. He gave us these two brothers. Uh, I've watched them work quite right with them, been with them. I've talked to them many times on the phone, asking for advice. And I thank the Lord that He has added them to the church. They are very capable, they're very willing, and they are very giving. Yes, a lot of times, one of us can give in one way, another one, another way, another one, another one. But when we put all three of them together, then it comes up a big hole. And I am very proud to call them. My brother and deacon and the next of the United Baptist Church. Amen. I know that Sister Diane and Sister Lynn that you're about for Brother Robin and Brother uh, Keith uh, and Sister Gail Strange, all of and my wife, we could all vouch for Brother Keith and Brother Robin um, as far as just to be good students for this church. And uh, um, I could stand and talk all day. And uh, been to for a while back with Brother Keith's home. Yeah. And uh, um, we had a good time. Mm -hmm. If you ever go to Brother Keith's home, I don't want you to think that him and Sister Leah is uppity when you go in there. They have these real big, beautiful chandeliers hanging in their house. And you think, wow. But you got to realize the reason behind those chandeliers is that if they want to. I didn't realize that I'd looked at those chandeliers a long, long time ago in old brother Wardy Craft's house up at May Keith, Kentucky. And I didn't realize that Brother Keith and Sister Lee had made ways to lock those. Is that right? And put them up in their house. And uh, Brother Wardy and Sister Hazel probably raised over a hundred and some children in their lifetime in orphans. And um, they had a nice, beautiful home, but it was full of history and love. And, uh, and that means a lot. And um, we're glad and thankful for you. Uh, so he's smiling at me. Yeah, yeah. Our brother Wardy was a great brother. He, we couldn't find no better. I'd like to say at this time, if uh, um, Brother uh, Paul, if, um, if you would, if your brother would uh, get a song, wouldn't mind to have, he'll hold my hand. And while we sing this song, this brother, I'd like for him to stand and turn. We want everybody that will to come and give him a hand. <coughs> Shake, to shake their hand and greet them as deacons and after we get done singing that song we will uh, ask Brother Josh Newsom from the Pilgrim Prayer Church up in Pike County, Kentucky this morning to lead in prayer and proceeding forth of laying on hands and brother when we do that you'll, you'll just be seated back in your, in, in your seats there and, and, and we might do things a little different but if anybody wants to come around uh, other than the ordained authority and wants to bow down and pray um, um, you, you can do that you can do that. Prayer is open to everyone, and, and it's, it's for the whole church, and uh, uh, we welcome that. But, uh, brother, if you'll gather around and, and do that, go ahead. Oh,
Brother the moderator, I second that motion. We can second, but we will see the church proudly and very happily, very thankful, receive these brothers back as deacons of this church. And uh, I'm not going to pronounce your name and wife, but I'm going to go back to your seat. <laughs> we love you. Here we go. Yeah, we'll get to the end of that. And uh, I uh, we're thankful for them. Are you glad you came today? Church's not over. I know that made when I was little, I probably went on But uh, we're, we're glad to thank you. We've got some good preachers here. And uh, um, I uh, I know I was sitting there and I was th- we was talking in our mind and uh, we was expecting Brother Clyde Bentley down with us today. And I think maybe something came up and he couldn't make it. But um, you know...